Hello friends, I'm so excited about recording this video because I'm going to share with you eight great books on philosophy. Every book that I'm going to mention is had a profound influence on my life and my way of thinking. They taught me how I can improve my life by giving me very practical pieces of advice. I know that I won't be able to fully satisfy your hunger for philosophy just by giving you 40 second to one minute reviews here, but my aim here is to show you where to start, to give you an overview of some of the greatest thinkers in history and point out some great books that can help you to embark on your journey of self-discovery. I believe that by the end of this video you will be able to select and choose a philosopher whose ideas resonate the most with your heart and with your particular point in life. Each of those philosophers will belong to one of the two camps. On the one hand, there will be practical philosophers whose ideas can help you to form meaningful friendships or to be able to cope with anxiety. But on the other hand, there will be philosophers who can teach you how to form new mindsets, who can expand your worldview. So let's begin with a practical philosopher. This philosopher has completely changed my life. When I encountered him several years ago, his name is Seneca. And there is one thing about his life that you must know about. The great Stoic philosopher Seneca used to suffer from asthma and sometimes those asthma attacks would get really hard and severe. He would walk down the streets of Rome and those asthma attacks would make him collapse on the floor and public would gather around him to see how they could help him. But back then there was no cure for asthma, no way to relieve those attacks and each attack could prove to be his last. He knew this and I think this has influenced a lot his his philosophy. It is not surprising that ancient Greek and Roman doctors used to call asthma a rehearsal for death because they knew that a patient such as Seneca could die at any moment during those attacks. There is absolutely no doubt that Seneca was profoundly influenced by those attacks that he had throughout his life. This is one of the things that I would like to convey to you in this video, is that I believe that no great philosopher could come up with great ideas without leading a great life. The lives of great philosophers are not separable from their great ideas. Since Seneca was influenced so much just by his asthma attacks, can you imagine how much his philosophy was influenced by the fact that he was a tutor and advisor to one of the most cruel emperors in Roman history. His name was Nero. In order to discover deeper and understand Seneca better and to know how to practically apply his ideas, I would like to recommend you a book written by David Feidler. He's a wonderful writer and he wrote a book on Seneca which is called Breakfast with Seneca. Each chapter in his book is divided and focuses on a particular advice given by Seneca. So, for example, there is a separate chapter on how you can form meaningful friendships. David Feidler is a wonderful writer and this is a really great book. If you would like to get more familiar with the author, I would recommend you to listen to my interview with David Feidler, which will be linked in the description of this video. And since we are discussing Stoics, I would like to jump to another Stoic philosopher, about whom you definitely heard and perhaps you even have read his book. It is Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor who is often labeled as a philosopher king, who used to write private journals, which we know today as meditations. Every list on the essential books on philosophy will have meditations on top of it, but not many of those lists will tell you about the story behind those journals, behind meditations. And a book that I believe you should read before reading Meditations is written by Donald Robertson, who is one of the leading Stoic thinkers of our time. I've interviewed Donald Robertson for my podcast, it will also be linked in the description, and his book is called How to Think Like a Roman Emperor. Pay attention to the title of the book. How to Think Like a Roman Emperor. The book in itself promises to show you how Marcus Aurelius came up with these ideas. Why did he decide to keep a journal? And it will teach you how you can mimic 
Marcus Aurelius in his own journey. It is a wonderful book and I think it is one of those books that need to be read before reading meditations because it will give you a context. It will show you how Marcus Aurelius' thoughts evolved. Of course, as I said, I've interviewed Donald Robertson. If you would like to learn more about this book, I would really recommend you to listen to that podcast which will be linked in the description as well. Every philosopher that we are going to discuss here was an extraordinary person, but not many of them would be great uh, people to invite to your, your to your dinner party. Some of them would be really annoying and one of them would be Ludwig Wittgenstein. But if there was one thinker with whom I would like to establish a close friendship with, it would be Michel de Montaigne, the man who invented the genre of essays. And a wonderful book that can introduce you to Michel de Montaigne is Sarah Bakewell's book called How to Live a life of Montaigne in one question and 20 attempts at an answer. And once again, all of those books have clues in their titles. The clue here is the word attempts, 20 attempts at an answer. As I said, Michel de Montaigne invented the genre of essays. But what is interesting is that where the word essay comes, why did he decide to lab label his writings as essays? The word essay comes from the French word essayer, which means to try, to attempt. I've mentioned several times in my videos that every important question in life doesn't have a final and definite answer and every essay of Michel de Montaigne was an attempt to give an answer to the questions that bothered him. What happens after death and how to overcome grief? How to form a meaningful friendship? What does friendship mean? All of those topics that are incredibly relevant to our lives was covered by Michel de Montaigne but he tells you that he doesn't give you a definite answer. He gives you an attempt to an answer, that he is discovering the answers to those questions as he goes through life. And this is what makes him a wonderful writer. I'm sure that once you will start reading Michel de Montaigne's essays, he will instantly become your very close friend. And the best person to introduce you to this best friend would be Sarah Bakewell and her book. Right, I think I should receive some kind of an award of being able to summarize those really deep thinkers in 40 seconds to one minute because there are so many ideas in each of those thinkers that it's very difficult for me to simplify and I don't want to simplify their ideas. I'm saying this because this is kind of a disclaimer. I'm going to tell you about this wonderful book called Think Least of Death. Spinoza on how to live and how to die, written by Professor Nadler, a wonderful book. I know the title is slightly morbid. Spinoza's ideas often refuse to be summarized, but I'll try to tell you a little bit about his life to give you an overview why you should read him and how he can improve your uh, life and what kind of advice he can provide to you. Spinoza belonged to Portuguese Jewish community of the Netherlands and he lived in the 16th century and he was excommunicated from this Portuguese Jewish community for his heretical ideas. His parents really wanted him to become a merchant, you know, to follow the footsteps of the family and earn money the way uh, all the ancestors did. But Spinoza found it to be very boring and he dedicated his life to philosophy. He came up with the idea that God and nature is the same thing and that there are rational laws that govern all these processes and that every person can become free if they follow reason. And I know this is a very simplified way of telling you about the Spinoza's ideas, but Spinoza can teach you how to follow your reason, how to become truly free, how you can control your impulses and what are impulses in the first place. In order not to further simplify him and his ideas, I would recommend you to listen to my interview with Professor Nadler. philosopher who is definitely a philosopher of the mindset is Søren Kierkegaard. He was a Danish philosopher who lived in the 19th century and there is a wonderful book about him written by Claire Carlyle. It's called 
philosopher of the heart, the restless life of Søren Kierkegaard. Søren Kierkegaard, a philosopher with a very difficult name to pronounce, lived in the 19th century. He lived in Copenhagen and he noticed how many of his fellow countrymen described themselves as Christians, but didn't clearly know what they believe in, that they followed religious doctrines automatically on autopilot without questioning it. Many of Kierkegaard's ideas revolve around questioning what it means to believe. What will be definitely an interesting book to begin with is Claire Carlyle's book. She explores the key works of Kierkegaard and I think there is a reason why Kierkegaard is often labeled as the father of the existentialist philosophy. He raised a big question, a question that we are born into in this world without being in control when we are born, where we are born, in what kind of families we are born. And he tries to explain this fact of our lives by connecting us to God, questioning God, and trying to tell us what it means to truly believe. Around a year ago, I made a video which was called Where to Start Reading Nietzsche. I think I'll link it somewhere in the corner. And in that video, I recommended you to read John Kag's book called Hiking with Nietzsche. I've interviewed John Kag for my podcast as well. And you can watch this video and listen to the podcast. But I do believe that there is another book that is... Um, a perfect introduction to Nietzsche's ideas, and it is a book written by Suprido. It's called I Am Dynamite, A Life of Nietzsche. Hands off, this is the one of the best biographies ever written. I think like everyone who would like to learn how to write a good biography needs to read Suprido's biography because it is absolute page turner. Every book on this list is a page turner, but I think if I could rate as number one, if I could place one book on top of the all of the other books, it would be this one. The reason for this is that you really immerse yourself into the life of Nietzsche. You learn about how he formed his ideas, what he went through, and you learn a lot about his way of thinking. So I would really recommend you to read this book. I think I reread this book three times, and I still believe that this book is one of the best books written on Nietzsche. If you remember when I was telling you about Michel de Montaigne, I told you that some of the philosophers from this list wouldn't be good guests at dinner parties. And when I told you about this, I meant Ludwig Wittgenstein, because according to another great philosopher, Bertrand Russell, who was friends with Ludwig Wittgenstein, he said that Ludwig used to be very annoying. He used to come and talk about his ideas without allowing anyone to respond or give their opinion to the ideas that he was kind of expressing. And when somebody was um, actually uh, managing to give a reply and ask him something, he used to dismiss them, saying that they are uh, saying utter nonsense. So he wouldn't be a good guest at the dinner party, but he led an absolutely fascinating life. He volunteered to serve in Austrian army when the First World War be, uh, broke out. And not only he volunteered to serve in the army, but he asked his superiors to place him right on the front line where thousands of soldiers died every day. He wanted to do this because he believed that by facing death, he can come up with the true meaning of life, to come up with truly meaningful and important ideas in philosophy. I found this fact to be fascinating. To go to almost certain death is just illustration of what I meant when I told you that the lives of great philosophers are inseparable from their ideas. And the last book on this list is written by Sarah Bakewell, the same author who wrote about the life of Michel de Montaigne. And in this wonderful book called At the Existentialist Café, she tells us about the existentialist philosophy and how it was born in general. The problem was that after the First World War, many traditional philosophers were trying to answer questions that were completely irrelevant to life. They were stuck on questions such as 
how to know whether something is true or how to know that whether this book is real. And those questions were not relevant, especially after the First World War, when millions upon millions of people died and those philosophers weren't providing any meaningful answers to the questions that people craved for. And Sarah Bakewell tells you how those existentialist philosophers, such as Simone de Beauvoir, Jean-Paul Sartre, Albert Camus, Ed Edmund Husserl, Martin Heidegger, and all those people, philosophers who you've heard about, how did they come up with their ideas? What were their ideas? How you can practically apply those ideas, those mindsets? So it is an incredibly well-written book, and I was so excited to find out that in March she's releasing her third book. Can't wait for it. When I was compiling this list for you, one thing that I tried to avoid was the feel as if you came back to the university and a tutor gives you a syllabus of books that are essential to read. Even some YouTube videos that I watched in preparation for this video sounded as if I'm listening to my tutor at the university giving me those essentials that I need to read without giving me any context on how those philosophers can actually improve my way of thinking and my life. I tried to avoid this and I hope that some of those books will end up on your reading list and will have an impact on your life, on your way of thinking. And two more things that I would like to mention. First of all, you might have noticed that I got a haircut, but <laughs> on a more serious note, I wanted to say that existentialists were correct when they were saying that Today, we are born and not given any tools on how we can cope with challenges that life throws at us. Before 200 or 300 years ago, this role was served by religion, but today, I believe this role is played by philosophy. But we need to discover philosophy on our own, and we are lucky that we live in the golden age of science writing, on philosophy writing, that writers such as Sarah Bakewell, Stephen Nadler or Sue Prideaux can introduce us to those thinkers. Everything that I've mentioned, including my interviews and of course those books, will be included in the latest edition of my newsletter, which will be pinned in the comment down below. Thank you for all your support. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.